Hello friends, welcome to Creator King. I know I should stop drinking so much soda, but it's just that Coca-Cola makes me so happy that it's impossible for me to resist. Although I get depressed every time I see my clothes no longer fit, but for the moment, let's enjoy this delicious nectar. With a few squares of triple ply toilet paper, clean off any sugary drops that may remain on the can before taking out our sharp box cutter and slicing it right down the middle. The last section of the can will be cut with a pair of scissors to facilitate the process. With those same scissors, eliminate that horrible rough edge that could slice off all your fingers. Take a black permanent marker out of your pencil case and mark a black rectangle on top of the Coca-Cola can. Then, with the help of the box cutter, eliminate the marked section through which a switch like the one you see on the screen will fit. Find your favorite super glue and secure the switch in place by applying a little around its edge. Get all the electronic components of our usual electrical circuit and place them on the table. By the way, do you know who is an expert when it comes to cables and technological gadgetry? Good old Julio, in charge of editing all the videos that you will see on our channel. And who also helped me build a computer? What a catch! Not to mention that he is single, in case you were wondering. Make a few cuts around the edge of the bottom half of the container, then cut a small slit and pass the snap wires through the top hole. Making sure that everything is inside, close both halves of the can and test that the electrical circuit is indeed flowing through the circuit. I promise I will stop drinking soda and start dieting. When a five-year-old blatantly tells you that you look like you've gained a few pounds, it's time to rethink your eating habits. With the old trick of scraping the top of the can, we will remove this section easily and proceed to split it in two with a single blow. With the pieces separated, we can make a series of small dots appear on the lower part with a cheap magic trick. Take your drill out of your toolbox and start drilling holes left and right following the marks. When it finally looks like a colander, apply instant glue on the motor and install it inside the container, making sure that the pivot protrudes through the larger hole. On an aluminum sheet, draw this strange shape that seems to be taken from a ritual from a horror movie and begin to cut it starting at the corners and following the rounded design of each blade. With our propeller ready, we can bring our mini pocket drill and create a hole right in the center. Apply some hot glue in the hole and then insert it onto the motor pivot. Bend each blade of our future fan following the design imposed by all fan manufacturers on the market. With today's infernal heat, I can't wait any longer to finish this invention. Take the top of the can and, as with the first can, make a couple of cuts to make it fit easily with its counterpart. Once the two main pieces are ready, we can start shaping our latest fan model. Pull the wires from the motor through a previously made lateral hole. Take another sheet of Coca-Cola brand aluminum and roll it up applying glue at the end so that it keeps its shape. This will be the container that will keep all the wires safe. Put a little more glue on the lower part to secure it since this will be what supports the whole fan. Place the second piece of the fan on top of everything and with the soldering iron melt a little bit of solder on the connections inside the aluminum tube. Cut four thin strips from another piece of aluminum with scissors. Also cut a small circle of the same material on which we will begin to glue the strips creating a shape similar to that of a star. This will become the grid that will prevent any inept person from sticking a finger in there. Apply more instant glue on the center to glue a second circle. Apply a little more of our super glue on the piece that has the blade installed to glue the grid. It is my honor to present to you the best fan ever created on the face of the earth. With a power of more than 10,000 revolutions per minute and the ability to dissipate even the most powerful heat wave that summer can hit you with, this fan with an original design is the best investment you can make this year. What do you think of our product, Ms. Napkin? Yes, I completely agree. For the next invention, we'll need the dirtiest and oldest cable you can find in your house. Peel the cable like a cucumber with a box cutter until you can see the copper filament inside. Wind these around an everyday pin to give it a spring shape. Rotate the metal strand around the pin until it looks like the one in the video. With the help of small tweezers, bend the shorter end inward, forming a small curve. 
Shop at the corner store for the best lighter your allowance can afford to install the copper spring. To hold it, we'll need one of these clips like the ones your math teacher used to hold all the tests she had to grade. Place the clip making sure it holds the copper wire and turn on the lighter to heat the metal to high temperatures. This is how to make a soldering iron better than the professionals. So now you have no excuse for not soldering the connections in our inventions. The last invention is for pigeon lovers to have one as a pet. All this reminds me of when I once met an old lady who had about 10 pigeons flying around freely inside her house. It seemed that the real masters of the house were the pigeons and not the nice lady. I wonder what happened to the pigeon lady. I was talking so much that I didn't realize that what I just drank was a miserable Pepsi. Ugh! If you want, you can also use toilet paper to clean your tongue. With any color marker, we will mark the points to be perforated one in front of the other. Drill the can with a drill bit of medium thickness to leave good sized holes through which a wooden rod can pass. First, with a pencil and ruler, mark 16 centimeters, which we will then slice mercilessly with the help of a saw, placing the rod on the edge of a table. One, two, one, two, move that saw until the wood comes off. Insert the wooden rod all the way through the can and put it through a spin cycle to verify that it can indeed spin. To the rhythm of the drumsticks, we will proceed to measure another two sticks of wood considerably thicker at about 14.5 centimeters that will suffer the same fate as the first one. We can't leave such rough ends, so with a nail file your sister doesn't let anyone use, we will leave the wooden rods as smooth as imperial silk. Take the piece of cardboard you found in your last visit to the dump and glue the sticks down like two pillars. It still doesn't seem to have any use, but with this thin popsicle stick, that will break into different pieces with the help of pliers. We'll give it a more professional touch. Super glue the pieces to the base of the wooden rods in a triangular shape. Bring the impaled can and glue that to the wooden post too using instant glue before proceeding to get some strain. From this, cut a small section and tie it to the structure with the best scouting skills you learned during your childhood. By the way, since this is all about birds, what's your favorite animal that flies? Mine is the peregrine eagle. I hope I can catch one with this invention. Place a couple of popsicle sticks that we got from some ice cream a few moments ago under the can and secure them with some goo. Never underestimate the power of rubber bands. They may look like a simple office supply, but a single one has the power to unleash an impressive spinning reaction. If you don't believe me, just ask the poor can who surely wants to barf after such a demonstration. After checking a couple of times that it really rotates, get one more wooden stick that will be responsible for stopping the centrifugal force until the pigeon falls into the trap. The truth is that this whole invention is really an excuse to take revenge on that pigeon that dropped its biological waste on my shoulder while I was waiting in line at an amusement park when I was 8 years old. You and your species caused me psychological and social damage for which you will pay. After revealing my past traumas, let's apply some instant glue on the piece of popsicle stick that we just cut and glue it to the cardboard. Cut another small piece of popsicle sticks, which we will also glue to the base of our invention at a 45 degree angle. In this way, when any pigeon, represented by the pencil, lands on the rod, it will activate the rotation, which, through its intention, is not to give it a good blow. It may help to capture it. You'll need even more strings since you'll have to make a series of basic knots that generate a lump, the kind of knots you use to tie your shoes. While I continue to make more and more knots, I will tell you a forced anecdote to avoid the uncomfortable silence that is created in moments like these. I had a classmate in college with an inexplicable phobia of pigeons, something like pigeon phobia. And that's it. He ran away terrified every time one of them appeared. Make one last knot, but this time something special, since this will be a slip knot. The ones where the more you pull, the tighter it gets. To test it, I will put my hand in and pull it slightly so that you can see how it works. This way, when a despicable pigeon is taking a walk while looking for food, it will be quickly caught by our trap. <laughs> Cut the excess thread with a pair of scissors and get ready to install it on our invention. 
For this, we'll need another popsicle stick. Sometimes I get tired of so many. Cut it in half and immediately proceed to apply glue and join them on each side of the can. Attach the string to the tongue with a simple knot and test its strength. Now it will only be a matter of preparing the trap with some bait or object that catches their attention so that when they're looking for the old lady with corn, they'll be trapped in the blink of an eye. They won't even expect it. Let's see if they dare to fill my car with their disgusting poops again. Maybe I'll send it to my classmates so he can defend himself. It could be a good business. Thanks for watching our inventions made out of household items today. Follow my channel if you'd like to learn more about making simple yet incredible inventions. Also, click on the link to see more videos about my amazing inventions. Click on the link to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial.